How about a little culture? Please sit back and enjoy this little montage set to Mozart of everyone in the mainstream media saying, no way, no how, pish posh and don't be silly. Of course Hillary Clinton's campaign did not spy on Donald Trump. It did not. It did not happen. This was. There was no spying. There was. It's Pizzagate. The conspiracy team. Exactly. It's Pizzagate. The conspiracy team is no more accurate than Pizzagate. Mm -hmm. No one was spying on the president through the microwave. No one spied on the Trump campaign. There was no spying. There was no spying. No spying. There was 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 no spying. Wow. By the way, there was no spying, of course. Did you hear that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there was no spying. And uh, thanks to the Media Research Center for putting that together, because it is a great reminder that when it comes to, well, pretty much everything, in fact, the American media is clearly lying especially when it comes to stories about how the Hillary Clinton campaign spied, yes, spied on rival Donald Trump, continuing a tradition that began with Barack Obama's Justice Department's attempt to stop the bad orange man from becoming president. Now, though, more evidence is coming out that the Clinton campaign did, in fact, spy on Trump, and worse. According to a file from special, filing from special counsel John Durham last week, who is probing the activities of the Clinton campaign, lawyers for the Clinton campaign paid a technology company to, quote, infiltrate, that's a fancy word for spy on, servers belonging to Trump Tower and later the White House, in order to establish an inference and a narrative to bring to government agencies, i.e. the FBI, linking Donald Trump to Russia. In other words, the allegation goes, they hacked into Donald Trump's computers. They spied on him to try and plant evidence to create the impression that he was somehow in the pockets of Russia. This follows an indictment handed down last September against Washington lawyer Michael Sussman for allegedly lying to the FBI, charges which Sussman denies, incidentally. But the claim, though, is that what Sussman was lying about was documents he brought to law enforcement officers claiming to show, yes, that Trump was tied to the Russians. And importantly, what Sussman didn't disclose to the feds was that he was working for Clinton-connected law firm Perkins Coy and was also representing, you got it, the Clinton campaign. Kind of seems like this would have been important because it further suggests that the real crime of 2016 wasn't collusion between Trump and the Russians, but rather collusion on the part of the Clinton campaign and computer hackers they were using to try and build a narrative they could take to media and law enforcement. Indeed, this alleged hack produced claims that Trump had secret ties to a Russian bank, the Alpha Bank. This was a bizarre conspiracy theory that was retailed by none other than Hillary Clinton herself back in 2016. Back then, she tweeted, Computer scientists have apparently uncovered a covert server linking the Trump organization to a Russian bank. And attached to the statement was a, treat, was a statement from then Clinton policy advisor Jake Sullivan, who alleged that the, quote, secret hotline may be the key to unlocking the mystery of Trump's ties to Russia. <sighs> it's all pretty curious. Not that you'll hear much about it in the press, which is determined to keep a lid on the story. And if it all sounds a bit like Watergate, where the Nixon White House was accused of playing dirty tricks on the Democrats in the 1972 election, well, you'd be more than right. And in fact, most Americans agree. According to a Rasmussen survey, a majority, 68% of voters, think special counsel John Durham's accusations against Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign are very important and agree with former President Donald Trump that it is indeed a scandal worse than Watergate. The only difference is that in Nixon's time, the media hated him and helped hound him out of office. Now that it's the Clintons who are accused of the wiretapping and wrongdoing, too many in the press have gone strangely silent. What is this lady doing? Trampling. Trampling horses. Trampling. Stop it. 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 Hey, you don't have to hit him with that. Please, please, please. Take my hands and come. Feel this beautiful power of light and love. Is there nobody who has water? 
You guys don't look like bad people. You look like good people. You don't look like bad people. You look like you have good hearts. They have the strength. They have the strength to stand up like we are. This is terrifying, James. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Ro and Rita, we have gone from two weeks to flatten the curve to two weeks to flatten protesters, take your money out of your bank account, make peaceful protest a crime. It is an absolute disgrace. And, you know, it is quite telling, I think, that so-called peaceful, progressive, you know, universal liberal Canada has beneath that uh, velvet glove a real iron fist. And it's very, very telling because it's not just about COVID. It is about how all of these progressive governments, think about Jacinda Ardern in New Zealand. Think of so many others. Macron. Um, Macron. Victoria. 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 Hey. Exactly right. And every one of these times where, what's the root cause here? They've sacrificed basic principles of individual rights for the collective good. And every time you do that, it ends in tears. That is what is happening here. Make no mistake, this is what happens when you collectivize rights. You literally trample individuals underfoot. But to go back to the earlier point here, this is collectivist revolutionary yep. rhetoric that Trudeau Absolutely. is using. And this is the same thing that every, and I'm not calling him a communist, but he's basically talking like a communist here, <laughs> because the woke revolution, he is accusing anybody who opposes his woke revolution of being uh, you know, counter-revolutionary. It's just like saying hoarders and wreckers in Stalin's Soviet Union. It's just like saying you're disrupting harmony in communist China. These, this, this way of demonizing people who are standing up, again, for individual rights against the collective, and COVID has been the ultimate lever for collectivizers because they can yep. now say, and look around the world, you see professors, you see academics, you see politicians, all saying that the phrase individual freedoms is dangerous. And I, I, I've got to say, I love the whole way that you've basically broken down the whole woke religion. It's a wonderful guide for any of us who are looking to be woke. And I'd like to apologize, <laughs> first of all, for my uh, white, cisgendered, heterosexuality, Christianity, <laughs> patriarchal uh, nature. So so let me just get that out of the way. Um, but That's right. Shame on I, you. Shame on me. Thank you. And I'm feeling, you know, the, the thousands of years of guilt and oppression on my shoulders right now. You can tell. But isn't it wonderful to these language guides and I love how you use you say say you know oh there's all these other words that you could use to describe evil but now you just have to say it's whiteness how does how does whiteness <laughs> now become just the actual catch-all for everything that's bad in the world well it has I you know we, we talk about wokeness as a religion and you know in Christianity and a lot of religions you have this idea of original sin this this fundamental flaw that all human beings have well in wokeness, um, that original sin is is whiteness. They've 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 kind of taken that principle, borrowed it from religion, and they've assigned it to uh, to the idea of whiteness, uh, patriarchy, Western civilization. You know, with the goal being uh, the eventual uh, dismantlement and, and teardown of Western civilization. So it it is a it has a lot of parallels to religion in that way.